So last night was a game that basically showcased all of the flaws that Terry Stotts has as a coach. Yo, what's going on True Blazer fans? It's Tori and I'm here with a Blazers vs Lakers recap. Now this is a tough game to talk about because it was a tough loss. It was a very frustrating game. But basically in this game recap, I'm just going to talk about all the flaws that I saw that I hoped I wouldn't continue to see. It's flaws that happened in previous years that should have been corrected by now. And it's mostly coaching flaws that brought us to the point where we were down 20 points in the fourth quarter at home to the Los Angeles Lakers. One thing I've always hated about Stotts' offense is it's just so geared towards jump shots. Some nights, They'll just keep chucking them up and they'll keep missing them. Yesterday, we shot around 20% from the three point line. We also took way too many threes. Last night, Portland shot 17% from behind the three point line and shot 35 threes. Six for 35. If you're missing that many threes, you should not be shooting that many. There was just very long stretches where nothing was falling. I know a lot of shots went in and out, but that's going to happen. When that happens, you gotta be able to get to the rim, you gotta be able to get layups, you gotta be able to be aggressive enough where you get fouled and you get to the free throw line. And honestly, Damian Lillard is probably the only player on our team that can consistently do that one-on-one, -on -one. so we need an offense structure to getting easy shots inside the arc, to getting layups, to getting back cuts, to getting screes where guys are actually cutting towards the rim instead of cutting around in circles around the three-point line. None of that happened last night. It was just jump shot, jump shot, jump shot. We're shooting 17%, let's shoot more jump shots. The second thing that frustrated me was Yusuf Nurkic had some foul trouble early in the second half. Jake Lehman had played solid in the first half, played with the starters, and then played a little bit with the second unit, which makes sense. The Los Angeles Lakers are a smaller team, they're more athletic, so Jake Lehman as a small ball four definitely makes sense to use him in that role. Instead of using him in that role in the second half and having Collins play center, Terry Stotts substituted in one Myers Leonard. And I'll give props to Myers when he plays good. But when he plays awful and makes terrible decisions, I gotta call him out on it as well. This dude seems scared to shoot the three-point shot. The first possession of his stint in the game, he passes up an open three-point shot to try and drive the lane. All of a sudden, he thinks he's Damian Lillard. And he drives into three different people, loses the ball, and it's a turnover headed the other way. Had a couple bad defensive possessions, and he only played three minutes. So this game isn't his fault at all. It was just mind-boggling to me that Terry Stotts did not substitute in Jake Lehman. Actually, I don't even know if Lehman was out of the game before Meyer subbed in. He should have moved Jake Lehman to the small ball four spot, played Collins at five, would have matched up a lot better with the Los Angeles Lakers. But after Myers Leonard makes a few mistakes, he dropped a wide open pass that should have been an easy dunk and then kicked it away from himself. After all that, instead of subbing in Jake Lehman, Terry Stotts substitutes in Caleb Swanigan, who is definitely not athletic enough to compete against the LA Bigs. The LA Bigs were blocking pretty much everything. But no, you had Caleb Swanigan subbing in the game, and it was to the point that he got a relatively open layup or dunk under the hoop. He couldn't even dunk it. He's six foot nine, and he wasn't athletic enough to just rise up and dunk the ball, and he ended up getting blocked because he went up so slow and so soft. And Caleb Swanigan will work against some teams, some slower, less athletic big men but not against the Los Angeles Lakers. While Swanigan couldn't dunk that easy shot, you had Jake Lehman getting multiple putback dunks in this game. And Jake Lehman could also space the floor, maybe hit a three. I just don't understand that substitution pattern by Terry Stotts. It made no sense to me. Third, why are we standing around and not moving the ball anymore? During the preseason, this was a big point of emphasis, and we actually saw some progress in this area. And then you got into a game like this, and the team just didn't move the ball, were stuck holding the ball at the top of the three-point arc constantly, and it was usually big men just trying to search for a guard to get the ball to, wasting the shot clock. There was, wasn't really any productive player movement to the rim. It had no flow, and this is the type of offense that we saw against the New Orleans Pelicans in the playoff series last year. We also didn't really look to get in transition at all, which is something we should have done because our half-court offense was very ugly and it certainly wasn't producing much. 
we did have 19 fast break points, but a lot of those were open layups just off of steals and stuff like that. I want to see us push even when the other team makes a shot, try and get a point in transition. If we get a rebound, I want to see us try and get something in transition. We don't look for that enough, especially when our half court offense is completely bogged down and struggling. Fourth, I honestly think we have some of the worst results out of timeouts. And this is something I looked at last year, and this is something that has kind of bothered me for a year and a half or so. It seems like we have more turnovers than any NBA team out of a timeout. It seems like when we call a timeout with the ball, a turnover is coming out of that timeout. Or a bad shot like an Al Farouk mid-range jumper, which was a shot with 10 on the shot clock earlier this season out of a timeout. We had a couple of times yesterday where we had a turnover out of a timeout. Now, I don't know if Terry Stotts draws up a play in the timeout, but it seems like we always struggle to even get the ball in in that situation. I don't know. I feel like we should just be a lot more productive out of timeouts offensively. We shouldn't be worse. Fifth and foremost, why can't we guard a Rajon Rondo pick and roll? This dude loves playing against us, and I feel like it's because of our pick and roll defense. We could blitz him, try and make him pick up the ball, then try and rotate back to our man. We could hedge the pick and roll. We could switch up coverages, maybe make him a little bit more off balance. We started going under the screen, but Rajon Rondo was still able to get ahead of steam downhill and able to get to the rim or hit a lob. Sagging that big man against Rajon Rondo doesn't work, and we should have figured out during the playoff series last year. He always makes the right decisions against it, he always either gets a good shot for himself or others off of it, and that's why he's always killing us. But Terry Stotts doesn't adjust the pick and roll defense, I'm not even sure if he has different pick and roll schemes ready to go, which he should. If you're a ball handler coming off a pick and roll and you don't know what type of defensive coverage you're going to see, you're not going to be as comfortable, you're going to have to be able to make different reads instead of making the same read over and over and over again, and you're not going to be as productive, it's as simple as that. But we don't switch up pick and roll coverages, ever. So it leads to Rajon Rondo having great games against us. At this point when we play Rondo, Rondo honestly outcoaches Terry Stotts. And I wouldn't be being this hard on Terry if I knew he wasn't better than this. He's a better coach than what he showed last night. So whenever he has duds like that one, I'm going to call them out. I'm going to be honest. With every opinion that I give on this channel, I'm 100% honest. That's the way I have been. That's the way I'll always be. So let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of the coaching in that Los Angeles Lakers game last night. In these losses, I won't really recap the games like I will in wins. I'll kind of just talk about some of the issues we had, what we need to do to fix them, stuff like that so anyway timberwolves game tonight no jimmy butler so we need to get that win hopefully carl anthony towns doesn't go off against nurkic that's a tough assignment for him we might see a lot of zach collins just to guard carl anthony towns who's good on the perimeter shooting threes and inside the paint it'd still be pretty nice to be seven and three that's still a pretty solid record starting off the season so anyway i hope you true blazer fans have a great sunday this has been tori peace out go blazers